It's so good, Rob. Like, as good as Duke is, as good as Assembly Hall is, as good as Mackey is. And, like, those are the, like, that come to my mind. They're, like, four of the top, you know, three of the top. I just feel like there's something about Allen Fieldhouse that separates itself from everywhere else. I, I don't know if it's walking up to the place and you kind of get goosebumps to the video beforehand, but I, I think it's just the number of fans and that it's not just the student section is incredible, absolutely incredible, but it's everybody else. Like at Duke, it's small. Everybody's on top of the players. That's what you see on TV, right? The crazies are on top of you. They're, they're able to almost touch the players. Um, and as media, we're front and center. We're, we're mid-court, front row. It's awesome. Kansas, we're now up top a little bit, and it doesn't matter, Rob. Like, I feel like the atmosphere is just so electric. It's so loud in there all the time, and everybody's into it. It's not just the students that are at the highest level. And there's a ton of them at Kansas, and they were there, you know, hours before camp it out, which is nothing new. Everybody, you know, all the best places do that now. But man, the 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 just the history, the tradition, and and the fact that again, it's so loud in there. It's louder in there than any Purdue's probably second for me right now in terms of like. No, I agree. Atmosphere. I agree. I but, I did a game at Kansas. It was now it was like Dean Wade, Kamal Stokes, Kansas State team, Bruce Weber's team split the Big Twelve with uh with Kansas that year. And we I did it for radio. Um it was an ESPN game, and we were sitting on kind of where the sideline meets the baseline. So at one of the corners, essentially, right by the band. And my ears rang for like a day where and it was probably because the band was there, but still I was blown away by the level of noise. I have a video on my phone of right before tip off and it is so chaotic, right. but it's so awesome. Yes. And I, I think, I think Purdue is too as well. Um, I think Duke would be there. I think Indiana would be there, but there's no doubt to me that, that Allen Fieldhouse and with the, like the museum aspect of it, you get everything. It, Rob. Yeah. It's so yeah. much cool stuff in the concourse that is, goes back to the beginning of the invention of basketball. It's just like the, and then also the history of Kansas. You know, you look at who's played there and you're like, dude, there have been. You walk beat. down the hallway, dude, yeah. you walk down the hallway, all those jerseys. And I don't know, you know, you go to the practice court beforehand. It's just. No, it's, it's the real deal. Um, and they were, why, the why was Kansas able to handle Houston the way they did? Well, early on, I actually think Hunter was kind of the key in a way because Again, you throw the ball in a hunter, and they were doubling in the pass every time. And he had he good practice threw. last year dealing with that. He did. He had a lot <laughs> He's of getting doubled every yes. time last year. But like Kansas is full of of what I felt like are not non shooters, but not great shooters. Okay, but you know the difference between getting an un uncontested shot and a contested shot. And now you're talking about when hunters moving the ball as quick. His decision making was elite. So he would get out of the post quick and then they would reverse the ball. And then you talk about Johnny Furphy getting an open one, you know, Harris getting a wide open one. And then you start making them and you're at Allen Fieldhouse. And these guys had heard it, honestly, for probably a week or two. I talked to Harris after the game and he's like, Yeah, like I know people were counting us out. People were saying that we weren't a Final Four team anymore. You know, they lost some bad games, right? I mean, on the road, West Virginia, you know, on the road, UCF, people are like, well, this Kansas team doesn't look the part. But when they're clicking, and Bill Self said this to me after the game, when they're clicking, they're as good as anybody in the country. Their starting five is as good now with Johnny Furphy emerging as anybody. Like that kid, man, he's their best shooter. He's the guy right. now and. He doesn't hesitate now, Rob. And it needed to be him or it needed to be my man to transfer who has not played Timberlake, well. Timberlake, uh, who doesn't play. I yeah, mean, it needed to be one of those two, and it's been Furphy, right? Oh, Furphy's like a first-round pick now. Like he, he's, he's long. He can shoot it. He moves the ball. He makes good decisions. He's tough. Now, he's not strong enough, but, like, Houston wasn't able to take advantage of that, right? Sharp was on Furphy. And Sharp's given up a few inches. 
And instead of trying to go in and back Furphy down and use your physical, you know, play, he was fading away. He was taking these fadeaways. And I'm like, I get it. Because again, Furphy, the one thing he has is length. So, but I think certain guys will be able to take advantage of him. Houston didn't. And Kansas, they made nine of their first 10. A lot of more shots that Kelvin Sampson said, like he wanted Kansas to take. They made him. And then once they make him, man, that crowd. Well, yeah, then, then they're rolling, them. right? It's, it's a different worth, deal once that place gets gets going. I felt like the other night, it, Saturday, it was worth like eight points. I yeah. honestly did. I felt like it was worth eight points, which sounds insane. But, you know, again, the problem for me still lies in like the tournament. Does Kansas have enough depth? Do they have enough depth that, that if Furby's What would not, you say they're going? Are they are they rolling six deep right now? Maybe seven? I guess seven with Braun? Brown? Brown Brown was good. He made the biggest yeah, so he, Is he their seventh man? Yeah. El Marco, Brown, Timberlake. That's six, yeah. seven, eight. And Timberlake really doesn't give him anything right now. So you're talking seven. And Brown, if he does what he did the other day, I mean, he comes in, he bangs a three when Houston had cut it and put a little bit of game pressure on him. And I said to Bill after the game, I'm like, you know, huge shot by Parker. He, he looks at me. He's like, that was his first three all year. His assistants were like, no, no, coach. That wasn't his first. Made- I feel like with coaches, sometimes there's certain details, like yeah. how you pronounce their l- player's last name or like they something no like idea. that, where they are so locked into certain things and other things that you'd think would be easy. They're like, yeah, that's his first three. And he's made like five. Right. It was so funny. I need to look it up now how many Parker's made. But like Bill was like, yeah, first three all year. And and like Norm Roberts and, and Curtis, Allen, like, no coach. Like he's made a few. He's made a few. Yeah, so, I got it right here. Uh, he has he has made he's actually okay. shooting 43% from three this year. What? How many did he made? Three. No, that he's only the, he's only attempted that was his third. Uh, that was he's his attempted third. seven. He's three right. of seven from three. But he's shooting 43% from three. He's like, Yeah, it's first three of the year. Right. Right. <laughs> That's so. such a like head coach thing to one of those weird details that even though they know everything else that's going on, right, he right. he doesn't know how to pronounce his last name, and he does, you know, he he butchers how what his three point percentage is. I just feel like, and McCullough wasn't like great, but it, you still look at it at the end. He has seventeen points. He does what he does, right? He fills up the stat sheet. He put, you know, the thing about them is again, if they go again, Houston's not overly deep. Also, they're not, and the kid Francis got hurt. Nothing yep. serious. He'll be back uh, tomorrow. But, um, you know, Kelvin, the one thing he said, and he made a great point after the game, he's like, listen, he goes, he goes, first of all, the fact that they had Kansas as an underdog here is sacrilegious. He's like, Kansas yeah, should never be an underdog. He's like, basically, I knew we were done. When Kansas is, is an underdog, I knew we had no chance of this game. But I think he felt like, okay, you know what? We get, we get them back at our place later in the year. And like, I still think, and and somebody asked me this on pregame radio for Kansas, they're like, who do you think wins the Big 12? And at that point, Texas Tech was in the driver's seat. Obviously, they've lost now two this week, including one at home yesterday. I said, I I think Kansas and Houston share the title at the end of the day. I'm not giving up on that. I think this league is such a buzzsaw of a league. Nobody's running away with it. Kansas isn't good enough to run away with it. Houston isn't good enough to run away with it. I wonder, and and I heard Matt McCall ask this question, Rob. I'm curious to know your thoughts. He asked it last night on on After Dark. Um, do you think the buzzsaw of this league is going to impact any of these teams, whether it's Kansas, Houston? Those are the two teams that you think probably have a chance to do some real damage in the NCAA tournament. Do right. you think it hurts them or helps them? I mean – it could go either way. You, you hear the conversation, like the iron sharpens iron, t- iron type thing. And there's something to be said for that. You come out of the Big 12, and there's been a lot of talk about, you know, kind of their non-conference. How it's legit so was it from a, yeah. from like the net ranking standpoint? Yes. Yes. And that's, that's an interesting topic because I think you look at a lot of these teams and outside of maybe a few, it's a lot of games against teams in the 250s, 300s, and they've just, 
They dominated Especially them. Iowa so, State and TCU or two that stood out. Yes, to me TCU. Like, I did their game in December, and until they yeah. played Clemson, they had played nobody. Right, like that was their biggest test, and Clemson's good. Um, it, this league is insane. 